Hello everyone, so today we're going to do a quick tutorial on installing railing. So this is one of the parts to a the 1200 scale Titanic and right down here we have a piece of railing, one of the most fragile uh, parts on of railing on the ship. I, I chose this intentionally because chances of denting it uh, and bending it, you can already see it's not perfectly straight, are really good and high, which is what you'll have. There are other pieces that are much easier, but I figured let's let's tackle the most difficult uh, element first. All right, so let's get a couple things out of the way. Yes, I pre-paint my railings on the sprue before I cut them out. And I start off by using a metal primer. I let that dry. In this instance, I went ahead and primed it with white. And then after that, I applied the actual color that we're using, which is uh, XF2 Flat White from Tamiya. The reason that I do this is because I get a very fine finish while it's on the sprue. This is all done with an airbrush, except for the metal primer. And then when I'm done, I can look down on it. And this one actually did all right. But sometimes you end up with white, or sorry, the photo etch metal coming through on the top. And in this case, it's doing it's doing all right, uh, but you could go back with a brush and thicken it up if you want to. It's harder to remove it once it's installed. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is look at what is your connection point. So in this instance here, there's a lip right on this edge right here that runs all the way around, and we're going to be setting this piece down right here on that lip and that's where our glue point is going to be. So that works out nicely. Uh, and your ship that you're working on right now, it, might, it may just be a flat surface, though it's okay. Um, this technique will, will help you with that as well. All right, once you're ready to apply your railing, the first thing you got to do is determine where it's going to go. So in this example, this particular piece is going to start in this corner and just go straight, hang a left, around, and it's going to make another short little left and end up right here. Uh, it would be nice to know that it's going to end up there perfectly, uh, but there are certain givens. It's got to start in this corner and somehow end up around there. I would rather start in this corner and go this way and know I'm going to start in this corner and have extra over here or even end up just a little short and be able to cut it off or just not care versus starting here, come around and end up just way short altogether. It could, this could happen if you accidentally grabbed the wrong piece or it wasn't made right, but that's just what you got to work with here. So, first thing we're going to do is start off by grabbing our piece, and I'm going to determine that this is the corner that it's going in. Make sure you put it right side up, and we're going to go to right about here. And as you can see, there's going to be a turn. Now, unfortunately, in this example, we do not have a perfect 90 degree, it's rounded. So ideally, even though you can put a perfect 90 there, I'd like to do something a little bit more advanced and, and match that radius. How do you do that? Well, with drill bits. All right, so I have my drill bit that matches the radius of this corner, and I'll show you how them, I'm gonna make them bend in a minute here. Uh, there's a couple of things, a couple of ways you can go about doing this, though. We can start by attaching this end right here first and gluing it into position and then just bending it by hand and working our way around. But there's a lot of extra material here hanging out on the end that might cause it to become unstable. And so what I would like to do is get this first 90 in so that this entire piece of photo etch will roughly sit in position and then we just have a little bit to work with at the end. That'll give us the most gluing contact points here. So what I want to do is I'm going to grab a pencil or you can grab a piece of tape. And you, um, you can measure with a, a ruler instead if it's easier. I'm going to put a little mark right here on my photo etch. See that little black mark? And that's where I'm going to bend it to make my first turn. Let's do that on a photo etch bender. Okay, so here's our piece just slid in. Make sure you get it parallel to one of these um, railings, or uh, sorry, stanchions, or perpendicular to the uh, lines. And my little black line, it sticks out just a little bit past flush here because I'm not trying to bend it exactly 90. I'm going to go ahead and stick my round drill bit in here. I'm going to try and do this on camera. And I'll just go ahead and slide my little bender in here a little bit. 
and I just want it to be roughly the right size there. All right, let's take this out. Super fragile. Uh, hopefully you can see we do not have a perfect 90. We've got a nice little radius right there to work with. We'll see how that worked out on the part. Okay, so as you can see, it's really, really close. In fact, I'll just set it up and behind here. Uh, so we're, we've got the radius, we've got our turn, we're looking good. So now, how do I attach this and glue it in a position without making a mess of everything? Tape. You're going to use tape. This is, uh, to me, a quarter-inch tape. So let's go ahead and demonstrate what we want to do here. We'll just take a little piece, and I'm just going to stick it like that, stick it like that. And now... I'm going to come in here and try and do this on camera. Very carefully set your railing in the position. I'm going to get my corner right over here on the right. I'm going to roll that tape up and bump. I'll peel this one away. Set it down in the little groove where I want it to go. Pull my tape up. Okay. Now let's get some, let's go all the way down to this end where it's hanging off. I'm going to lift it up, set it on there exactly where I want it. Just work slowly and carefully. Tape. Okay. Now hopefully you can see our railing is placed exactly where we want it. I'm going to go ahead and stop with the taping right here. And I'm going to get CA glue. This is new CA glue. Uh, this is medium gap filling Bob CA glue or BNC CA glue. It's, it's, you could get whatever your company's name is right on there, but it's gap filling medium CA glue, five to 10 seconds, Instacure. This is what I use. It's cyanoacrylate, all right? You can use thin CA glue, but put a little dab on your palette. Grab yourself a toothpick or applicator of your choice. And what I'm going to do is put a little dab of CA glue on the back spot right there where I want this to stick. And I'm going to, I'll push it back in because there's a little channel there, like we said, that we wanted this to go into. And then we're just going to continue doing this and working our way around front here. Well, we'll call this the front until this whole side is secured into position. And then we can remove the tape. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've put the glue into position everywhere here except for on the uh, places where the tape is at. So we'll come back with our tweezers very carefully. Pull away your masking. and your railing's still in position. And that means you can go back to those spots. And make sure that you do glue all the way over here to the right, right where your corner is. You want firm contact there because we, we, we're going to bend this one by hand. Okay? So then go ahead and tack in glue where uh, that masking tape was at. Okay, so everything's glued. It's super fragile, but what that lets you do is go back. See how it's perfectly straight up and down? you could go back and, and touch it up and bend it easily into position. Because you've securely glued it down to the base structure now, uh, if you do accidentally damage it, you should be able to bend it back into position and not have to worry about it coming off. We hope, right? Fingers crossed. All right, now we get to address this whole little issue. If this was just exactly a 90 degree turn here, you could go ahead and just take uh, a good pair of scissors, some flat scissors, something, even just your fingers, and, and bend it into position. But we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to stick my little drill bit here and I'm just going to push it around with my fingers like so. And there we go. Now, apologies there, I've got it roughly in a position uh, and get a little glue in that right hand corner here and hold it in position just like that. Now we have our last corner to bend here 
And I'm really grateful that I uh, did what I talked about earlier. I am at this corner. I've made my turns. They're rounded. And I can tell this is going to end up just a little bit short. And we'll go ahead and just put this in the corner, wrap it around like so. And this one's easy, right? Put some CA glue down here in this corner where you want it to end up. Grab your tweezers and put it, hold it into position. Once it dries, you can monkey with this bend a little bit if you want to up here. And that's it, you're set. Here's your railing. Oh, I got a little dent, see this? So now we'll just go ahead and lift up very carefully and straighten that out. And there's the rest of the railing. Uh, so a final finishing comment, CA glue leaves a slightly glossy finish uh, where it's applied. And if you're using flat paint like I am on this entire build, uh, that might result undesirable effects. So the solution is to go back with your uh, main color here, paint flat white and a brush and we'll lightly paint right along those edges and the act of doing that not only fixes your finish but it adds one more layer of protection and adhesion for your railing giving you a uh, very nice piece when you're done that uh, looks really good. So anyway, that's my tip. This is the hardest stuff. Uh, there's easier um, railings to install on the Titanic and other methods that you could try, but hopefully that gives everyone a quick tutorial on how to handle railing. The secret is, once again, the tape. Uh, ask your comments and questions and stuff down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, it's been Midwest Miles Chop. Thanks for watching.